Hey everybody, this is MVArts and today we're going to find out how to make our own section shader. This section view shader needs two components to get the best result. First, we need a mask to review or conceal the mesh in any particular direction. The second part is capping the mesh, so we can't look into it. For this part, we're going to use a slice of boolean. I like to isolate the layer on which we are working. In this case, it's layer 2. We can see that the basic shader is assigned to the tree. Now let's create a transparency node. Then mix it with the basic tree shader. Press Shift A to add a new node, go to Input Geometry. Let's create a math node. Then hit Shift A again, Converter, Separate XYZ. Connect position of the geometry node to the vector input of Separate XYZ. Feed the Z output into the math node. Set the math node to less than. Now when we adjust the less than node, we can see a transition happen. The steps are a bit too large for my taste, so let's create another math node. Set it to multiply. The bottom value can be set to 0.1. Connect it with the less than node. The transition will be way more gradual now. I'm not sure why, but I like to create an invert node. Shift A, color, invert. Let's group this node setup, because I'm sure this will come in handy when we're applying this to other materials. We have to connect two values to the group's input. These are the top value of the multiply and the color invert value. Now all I have to do here is rename the inputs in the end menu on the right side. I've called mine slicer and invert. We're left with an easy to control node. Give this node group a descriptive name. Grab the group output and feed it into the mix vector. Now you can see where we're going with this. You could easily transition from transparency to complete opaque. To create a cap, let's make a plane. Scale it up as you see fit. Call this plane slicer. Then duplicate the object you want to be capped. Name the object something.cap. Go to the modifier stack and add a boolean. Choose slicer as a target. I've made a custom material for the inside of the tree and assign it to the tree cap object. When we go back to the node setup we made earlier, we can apply a driver to the slicer value. Hit the right mouse button and choose add driver. Manually create later. Open up another window, the graph editor, and set it to driver instead of f curve. Go to the driver step here in the end menu. Look for your slicer object in the object field. Set the type to Z location. Also, change from world space to local space to match the transformation of the slicer with a transition we made, say 4 times 10. This has something to do with the units in Blender you set in your Blender scene settings. When we move the slicer object now, the value should match with it. If this is not the case for you, Either you should hit update dependency in the driver window, or chances are your scene settings differ from mine. If this is the case, you'd have to do some math, figure out how to properly drive your transition through the slicer object. The tree object has two materials assigned to it. To get a good result, we have to copy the group node from one material to the other. It is as simple as Ctrl C, Ctrl V. More important is to copy the driver. Right click on the driver and hit copy driver. Go to the other material and say paste driver. Of course, we have to create a transparency node and mix it with a regular shader we made. Then feed the group node into the mix factor again. You might have to update dependency in the driver window. Tip, it's also good to have applied your transformations. And finally, the main thing I want you to take away from this, these are just the basics. Keep experimenting cause there are dozens of ways to make section views. In the end, it all comes down to the same technique. Create a mask, plug it into the mask shader and mix it with a transparency. Match the slicer object to the transition of the mask and you're good to go. That's it. I hope you learned a thing or two. Please subscribe if you did or leave a comment down below. If you want to follow me on Instagram to see what projects I'm working on, the link is in the description.